Twink at 4026, the saga continues. About half a year ago I created a video where I showed my first impressions of the beta of Twink at 4026. In these impressions I primarily focused on the package manager. Now it's time to look into more of the new features of Twink at 4026. In this video we're going on an exciting journey of discovery and we're going to look into reference libraries, the profiler, IntelliSense and FBInit, default values for parameters, simulation mode, static analysis, generics, and finally PLC redundancy. Wanna know more? Well, then let's get started. Hello everyone, back to Twink at 4026 again. I think that's time for it. I did a video a couple of months ago where I went through I mean, the new things with 4026, but I focused on the package manager. Today, I thought we're gonna continue and look at some other things that 4026 provides. So I have a list of a couple of things I thought I wanna discuss and show you. Uh, and you know, there's a, quite a lot of stuff we have to look forward to. I'm running something called 4026.2 here, which uh, I installed like two weeks ago, so end of November. Uh, so we have, you know, if you list the packages, local only, and we only list the workloads. So we have Twinket standard 4026.2 here. Uh, so again, the standard, that's, you know, the XAE plus the XAR, ADS, and some other things. Basically everything you need if you want to do development locally or in your development machine. So let's get started. The first thing I want to cover is something called reference to a library project. And this is something, you know, it solves a problem that a lot of us developers have that are working with libraries. So I'm going to explain with you. Um, I've created a very simple uh, solution here. So we can imagine that this is a solution that we're actually going to run in our PLC. It would be the actual compiled executable, you know, with all our real time information, our tasks and everything. Uh, normally what we might also want to do and I would say should, especially when we do test driven development, is that we have an additional project uh, where we have our uh, library stuff, right? So we have our our, our uh, business logic code, uh, our reusable function blocks, our tests and everything. And normally, so I'm just going to create an additional project here. I'm going to call it, you know, library project. Um, so I'm going to create an PLC project in there, and I'm gonna call, call this library project as well. Um, the the thing that we do here normally is that you know we create our our library information here, and then we create a library out of this that we use in our other projects. So you cannot you know if you imagine that we have our function block here, a reusable function block, right? We have that. This is just a reusable function block. Uh, we want this reusable function block to be used in this main uh, project where we're gonna actually execute it, where we're gonna instantiate it and use it. And the way that we've done in before 4026, so in 4024, 4022, and all the other Twinket versions before that, was that we went in here, we created our library. Uh, we, yeah, so I'm gonna call it Sagatowski GmbH, that's my company. Uh, now that I'm a grown-up person and have my own business. Title, my awesome library, version something. And you know, the the normal thing to do is that, you know, we would uh, save this lo library and install, we would put it somewhere, you know, desktop, and we would uh, reference that here, right? So we would create a library reference. Uh, here it is. And you know, every time we do a change in this library, we would have to make, um, uh, you know, reinstall it again. And you know, imagine that this is also in, an, uh, in a separate solution, so it's not even in this solution. It would be a separate solution and you would have to manage this all the time, right? So you would have to save as library and install. You do a change here, you know, you add some additional business logic or some additional tests or whatever. And, you know, you would again have to click here, save as library and install, and install it. Oops, I'm gonna lower the volume a little. Um, and then you would have to, you know, yeah, this is quite annoying. It's not optimal because, you know, you have to do this installation every time. There's a neat, tiny uh, new thing here in Twinket where you can right click here, properties, 
Wait, before we continue, let me just get rid of the old library so we don't have that there. We can uninstall it. Not sure, it should be still be okay. Um, what we have here is this new tiny tick, enable reference library. So it says a virtual library will be created from this project if company title and version is set. And what happens when we click this guy is that we can now um, add that as a reference library instead of this installed library. Uh, and that save us this additional step that we have to install it every time. So now I'm gonna show you if I remove this uh, by awesome library, which was the old library that I just uninstalled. Uh, let's see here. Twinket still works terribly bad with um, scaling. So I'm using 200% scaling here because I uh, delete. You see the, the but because I have a high resolution monitor and you know that's something I assume this horrible scaling issues here is because of of the usage of Codesys, which uses co some quite old APIs. Anyway, uh, the nice thing here is that we can add library. And now we get our awesome library as uh, yeah as, as our li library, but with these brackets. And if you select that, then our uh, let's see, then our awesome library is um, directly referencing the library that's down here. And now we don't have to install and you know save and install. It's just we can do it immediately. And I mean, it doesn't sound like a big thing, right? But if you use library a lot, which I mean, I primarily only work with libraries when I develop software, then you know, you have to save and install. And when you do this like 200 times a day, it quickly adds up and it saves a lot of time. So I just want to show you, you know, if I add an additional POU here. So first of all, I just want to show you that I can instantiate this guy in, in, in the main program here. So if I instantiate this, see it works, go to definition, everything is fine. And now if I add an additional POU, uh, banana, I don't have any better fantasy than that. If I instantiate banana, no. Let's see, uh, I don't know where I need to. Then we should have access to this and we don't. Um, this is at least a theory. Obviously, there might still be some bugs, but yeah, let's see. Yeah, okay. No, still not. Um, let's see if I forgot something. Properties, my also library, enable a reference library. That's everything. So that should just work. Okay, this is the theory. Uh, apparently, doesn't work super well. Um, it worked when I tried it this morning. Now it doesn't work because Twinket doesn't feel like it. Uh, now we can see this time thing disappear. So let's try again. Okay, now it works. So again, this is a beta, but this is at least how it should work in theory. And it kind of works in practice. I'm expecting it to work better in practice. So that was the first thing. Okay, the next thing I found is if you right click here, you have add and then there's a new thing here called the PLC profiler. And this is something that Bekoff have been talking about before. And it's basically a way to measure how long uh, stuff takes to execute so you can measure uh, execution of uh, function blocks and yeah this is really really interesting if you want to measure performance of your different uh, software and on a specific platform which i think is quite fantastic it's really a nice function at least from what i've seen so far from the uh, different fairs that pickup have shown this on uh, it requires an additional license from my understanding not 100 percent sure how this is going to work you know how the you know, if, if it's going to be like static code analysis or something like this, where it requires an additional license. This is my understanding. If I click on it, then something weird happens because now I get a window here at profile configuration, but you know, nothing happens. So I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Again, a beta. So I assume this is not fully implemented. What I do is I close this down and then we get this PLC profiler thing here. Uh, no idea what we can do with this. There's some specific properties for this PLC profiler. Um, but I also noticed that if you right click here, uh, we have a new uh, toolbar in Twinket called the PLC profiler. And here we have some settings. And I just noticed that if I select something, uh, if I try to press start here, it says license TE1210 is missing to use the profiler. So yeah, I assume this is 
is not going to be included by default in Twinket 4026. Well, well, it will be included by default in Twinket 4026, but you're going to need a license to use this. However, it seems this is not working right now, or there is something I have missed about how you're using it. Uh, definitely something that is worth to make uh, a video about in the future. Just wanted to mention it for you that this is where it is. I should mention that this profiler is going to be much, 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 much more, more detailed than the stuff you get when you go to real-time PLC task here and check how long things take, the cycle time, and, you know, if you get exceed overruns, this is much more details where you can go into, you know, much more individual objects and see, you know, individual function blocks in an individual instance of a function block and see how long they take to execute. So, uh, again, definitely have to make another video uh, about this new PLC profiler when it is available. The next thing I want to mention is something that I will definitely use every day. Uh, and that is, it's actually quite a simple thing, but still very useful. Let's imagine we have a function block called, you know, my, uh, my, my function block. Really bad uh, ideas for names today. And let's say uh, we have another, let's say we have an interface, right? So I'm going to create an interface here. Uh, interface, there we go. Uh, um, an interface uh, and we want to inject um, we want to inject a dependency to that interface so we have an object somewhere that lives and that implements this interface uh, and the way we go about that normally is by using the default constructor so the only constructor that exists in Twinkat which is called fbinit uh, and you know this is something I talk about this on my Twinkat course but you can use this for various purposes one is you know configuration of the object uh, another one is uh, dependency injection. So you inject a dependency to another function block that implements a certain behavior. And uh, this is really, really fantastic because um, I'm not going to talk about what FPNIT is. If you want to watch, if you want to know more about this, then watch the video. I will put a link somewhere there, somewhere up there. So click on that to watch. I just want to show you that let's assume you have, uh, we're injecting a dependency to this interface. So we're going to do I uh, on interface. I inter uh, sorry I was it again on interface and then we do our, our usual stuff where we inject it to a local instance and I'm gonna skip that what I want to show is the new thing here in 4026 and that is normally when we create an instance of my function block uh, when we wanted to know what we're gonna what we're supposed to put in that constructor we manually had to go into the constructor and see ah we need an interface you know so we always had to I'm, I'm just gonna show you when I created let's get over these bananas and reusable function blocks I'm gonna create my function block here an instance of it okay now when I wanted to know what you know so right now if I compile this rebuilt it's gonna say uh, nine because it is a german program no it's gonna say no uh, you're not allowed because you know fbnet requires one input and then you had to do you know you had to go into fbnet and see ah i need an instance of an interface and you know you provided that to the constructor but you always had to go here because there was no information about you know what the constructor looked like and now imagine if this is a separate library which it most likely is because you know you have your business logic in that separate library you know you really had to open that library and see what does the fe init method look like just to know what you're supposed to provide to the constructor now the new thing in 4026 is that intellisense support the constructor the fe init way and what does that mean i hope i didn't lose i probably lost everyone here but now what it means is that if i add a parenthesis here then it shows the fe init method and i don't have to go to fbinit anymore manually i can just see ah i need an interface so here i would you know i would have something that implements an interface you know it would uh, i uh, um, you know it would be an, an a function block here that actually implements it you know and i would i would provide it here directly and it would you know it, it's just very nice that intellisense now supports this and you know this is how I develop software, so I use the constructor a lot. And for me, again, it's just going to be like with the reference libraries. It doesn't save that much time everything, right? It only maybe says 20 seconds. But if you do this like 50, 100 times a day, you know, it quickly adds up. 
So thank you very much Codices and Beko for this function, I love this. Okay, while we're at looking at the code, let's go on to the next one. Uh, another new feature that is probably provided by the new Codices compiler is uh, that you can provide default parameters for input, uh, for default values for input parameters. So let's say we have a, a function block uh, like uh, motor. I'm just making something up. And we want to add a method that says uh, go to position or an axis or something, you get the point. And we have, uh, we create a method to it. And you know, normally here we would say, you know, go to position uh, F uh, velocity. You know, that would be a real, uh, this would be, you know, deep in some velocity, right? And then we would provide uh, F uh, position. So where to go to, so this is also a real. Um, in Twinkat 4024, uh, all twi ver Twinket versions before 4026, you had always had to provide both of these parameters when you were going to call this method. So just to, to show you what I mean is if we created uh, we create an instance of FB motor. I'm just going to get rid of this stuff. Uh, FB motor, uh, and we call go to position. Then you know both of these needed to be provided, right? And whatever you did, you always needed to provide values for all input values of a method. With Twinkat 4026, you can now set default values for these parameters so that they will be optional, which is a nice thing. So just to show what I mean, if I set this to uh, you know, 10, it means that you can set another value than 10 for the velocity, but if you don't, it's just going to use the value 10. And I mean, this is quite nice because it basically gives you the option to not provide any velocity and just use a, a, a velocity that, you know, comes a standard velocity. So what we can do now is, and this compiles, you see, first of all, we see it here. And now we can just say, you know, F position, we want to go to 100. And this is going to compile. So if I try to build this, just to make it clear, if I clear this, build, rebuild solution. Uh, okay, internal error, profile configuration not set. Okay, so let's just... That guy apparently... We sh probably shouldn't be looking at the profiler because I assume it's not implemented. Uh, if we rebuild again, you know, this builds. And this would never build on Twinkat 4026, uh, 4024. And uh, um, so everything before 4026. Because if it would... It would you know, it would require to uh, provide both of this. And this is nice. I mean, it's not exactly method overloading. You can't have like method overloading from other languages means that you can have um, multiple versions of the same method. So you can have a method called um, go to position and you can have different versions. It, this is not method overloading, but it still gives some additional flexibility in uh, uh, managing methods. So thank you very much for this. Another thing I happen to notice is that if you click here, uh, no, sorry, where is it? Here, you get to, you have a new thing here called simulation node. No idea what this is. Try to find documentation about it, any information. No idea if I click on it, nothing in particular happens. Not anything that I can notice at least. I don't know whether this will be the, yeah, I have no idea. So if any of my viewers know what this simulation mode is, then please let me know in the comments below because yeah, that would be really interesting. While we're on the topic of minor things, uh, if we go to properties here, another thing is that Beckhoff have added an additional check in this uh, static analysis slide. So you have something called suspicious operational string now as well. This was not available in Twink at 4024. Uh, again, this is not the full static code analyzer that's on T1200, which I have written about on my blog. Uh, but you know, it's nice that they have a, a, added one additional check here uh, for free in the static code analyzer light. Okay, the next one is quite a big thing, I think. Uh, that is something called generics or a, a version of generics. Uh, I'm gonna show you with an example. I think that's the best way to do it. So let's add another function block. I'm gonna call it, you know, just generics. Uh, normally when, I'm gonna take this as an example. Let's imagine that we have some function block that does something based on some data and it needs to process it into a byte array. You know, it does some network communication and we need to put it into a byte array of a certain size, but we don't know what size it is. Or we know the size, but you know, we don't know it in this function block. It needs to be provided from outside. Uh, 
Uh, and now there's a very nice function uh, with Twinket um, that we can use called generics uh, to kind of give us some, some flexibility in how we manage it. So let's look at this uh, var generic constant. So this is new. This keyword is new. Uh, you create a um, uh, number, so uh, a variable, a constant variable that defines a certain size which you can change when you instantiate this uh, this type this object so let's just call it a number that's an integer and it's 10. Uh, what we can do now is that imagine we have a, so this is again this is a constant that's the way you have to think about it now imagine we have an array. I talked about this array buffer or something that comes from the outside, right? Now we can use and have that array created directly here. So we're going to create a uh, byte buffer of that's an array or with size a number. Well, that can be anything. I'm going to get back to this soon. Of byte, right? So we have a byte buffer to store data from a, from a network device. Um, normally we, you know, we wouldn't be able we would have to have this byte buffer coming from the outside just because you know when we create an instance of this this function block we wouldn't know how big that is we would only know it when we create an instance of it but not when we create this particular function block in itself now what we can do is that we can we can instantiate this so let me just get rid of all this stuff here it's too much for me uh I'm sorry generics now what we can do is that we can provide the size of this constant inside. So I'm basically saying, so this is new, right? You don't recognize this when you're using these characters. You're basically saying that the constant that is, the, the generic constant that is in there will be, pro, will be set with the value 100. And then this number here will get the value 100 and that's the size of the byte buffer. And this is super, super convenient because now, you know, as I said, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to have a separate byte, buff byte buffer from here, you know, and like, you know, array of byte, uh, array uh, 1 to 100 of byte, uh, which was the tradition before. If you look at all the old Beckhoff function blocks, or actually all existing Beckhoff function blocks, you know, whenever you work with some sort of buffer, you, you always needed to provide this from the outside and then you needed, you know, to do this thing, FB generics, and you needed to provide, you know, a address, so address of, you know, the, the buffer and the si size of buffer, you know all of this, you know, so you always needed to provide it from the outside. Now we can, um, now we can uh, have that internally because we can set the size from outside, which is super convenient. So I want to show this in action. If we compile this, uh, oh. and we log in then our generics buffer in here is see it has 100 bytes we can even change the size so if i change this to 200 now activate then byte buffer has 200 bytes beautiful right so what actually happens is that it takes this number put it in puts it into this constant it replaces it i don't know why we need to provide a number here because if we don't then it doesn't compile or or does it maybe it does yeah no we need to provide a number no idea why uh, but that number is replaced from what we set from the outside, and then it's set up here. This uh, byte buffer is instantiated with with what we provide from the outside. The nice thing is we can even create more than one number. We can, you know, we can create a number two, and create a second byte buffer here, for example. You know, that has uh, that uses the number two instead, and then we can provide. You know, we can set up that th this is ten, this is twenty. Then this is gonna get the number ten. This is gonna get the number twenty. So we can compile this. Yeah, it will be easy to find use cases for this. Uh, I have quite a lot of code where I'm gonna that I know I'm gonna replace with this. So uh, when we look at now, this is the instance of generics. This first one has the size ten. The second one has the size twenty. So fantastic. Okay, another thing I happened to notice when I was working for the twenty six is that there is a new. Um, it's close profiler. There's another 
new toolbar here called, uh, where is it? Uh, redundancy, XA redundancy. So I assume that this is gonna be used for this PLC redundancy, so hot redundancies, when uh, you can have two PLCs running the same code and where one, if one dies, the other one will take over. Bekoff have shown this on the fairs on SPS and Hanover, um, and there seems to be some additional functionality in the toolbar for Twinkets. Nothing of this works now. I haven't managed to figure out if I can click on it or do anything. Um, there are new buttons here, but you know you cannot do anything with it. Just wanted to mention it. Well, I think that's enough for today. There's a bunch of other things that are coming in Twinket 4026, but I thought I'm gonna leave that for another video. Thank you very much for watching, hope to see you in the next video, and until next time, happy coding!